This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be adding a second layer of functionality to our camera controller by adding mouse controls. Now the nice thing about this is the way that we have it set up, all we need to do is create one new script, a new type of input manager, and we can use that in tandem with our keyboard manager. So what we'll do is we'll create a new C-sharp script, call it mouse input manager, and we'll open this up in Visual Studio. And this is going to inherit from our input manager class. And we can delete our start and update methods for now. We're going to put in a couple of variables into this one. First thing we're going to put in is a vector to int called screen. And this is going to give us kind of the, um, the height and width of our screen. And we're going to cache that information because it's going to come in handy in a few points for us. We're also going to have a float called mouse position on rotate start. And this is going to be important for when we are basically we're going to use kind of a dragging functionality when we are rotating our camera. And so this is going to give us kind of a starting point so we can determine which direction we should be rotating. In addition, we're going to need the same events that we had in our input manager. So I'm actually going to, in our keyboard input manager rather. So I'm going to open up that script and I'm going to copy these and paste them in here. So we have on, these are all taking in those, um, utilizing the move input handlers from our input manager class and it's the on move input, on rotate input and on zoom input. Now we can actually call some methods. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have an awake method. So say void awake. And this is going to just get us that screen information right at the start of our scene. So we're going to say screen equals new vector to int of screen dot width. That's with a capital S as well as screen dot height. And that's all we need to do there. Second thing we're going to have is an update method so that we can track when these updates happen. So the first thing we'll do is on the start of every update method, we're going to get the position of the mouse. So we'll say vector3 mp equals input dot mouse position. And that's going to store this for the rest of the frame for us. In addition, we're going to check, is this a valid position? And what I mean by valid is, are we on our actual window or relatively close to it? Because we don't want, especially when we're testing our game and we've got kind of the smaller editor window, we don't want to um, accidentally tell our camera to move when we don't want it to. So we're going to kind of limit it to being kind of, our, at least you have to be nearby the window for these things to take effect. So we're going to say, bool mouse valid equals, and we're going to just basically check, kind of like when we were checking if our um, camera position is in the bounds that we wanted there, we're going to set some bounds here. We're going to say uh, we want to be no more than, say, 5% of the screen's width or height outside of the screen. So, you know, if our screen is 100 pixels wide, we can maybe go about five pixels to the left or right of the screen, and after, if we're any further than that, we're just not gonna read the mouse input anymore. So we'll say mp.y is less than or equal to screen.y times 1.05f, and mp.y is greater, whoops, and mp.y is greater than or equal to screen.y times negative 0.05 and mp.x
is less than or equal to screen.x times 1.05. And finally, mp.x is greater than or equal to screen.x times negative 0.05. So we're basically giving ourselves a 5% buffer all the way around the screen that anywhere beyond that, we no longer care where the mouse is. It's not gonna affect the camera. Next, we'll handle movement. And how we'll do that is we'll say if, actually, what we can do, a little on the fly optimization here, is we're gonna say at this point here, if not mouse valid, return. So basically at this point, we know that if we're that far outside of the screen, we don't want to be controlling the camera. And so we're just gonna quit out of this for this frame and see if the, see if the mouse comes back next frame. And here now we're gonna say if MP is mp.y is greater than screen.y times 0.95f. So now we're saying if we're in the very the very top 5% of the screen or even a little bit beyond that, we want to move our camera forward. You can you see this a lot in like tycoon games where you can kind of move the mouse to the edges of the screen and move the camera around that way. So that's what we're implementing here. And here we're going to execute on move input invoke vector3.forward. Looks very similar to our keyboard controls. It's really just this that we're actually caring about. That's actually different now. It's the mouse position and not what key we're pressing. Else if mp dot y is less than screen dot y times 0.05 f. So if we're in the bottom 5% of the screen, then we'll invoke this, but the opposite. We'll move backward. I'm actually going to copy all this, paste it here. We'll do this for the uh, left and right controls. So now we're caring about x. If it's at the very right side of the screen, then we'll move to the right. And if our X position is on the very left side of the screen in the left 5% of the screen, then we'll move the opposite of right, which is left. Next, we can check for rotation. And so this one, we're kind of doing a, a double check. First, we're gonna check, did the mouse come down, did the mouse button come down? And we're gonna use the right mouse button in this case. You could also use, if you have a middle mouse button, you could choose to do that. For right now, we'll just use the right mouse button and can presume that the left one is gonna be for interacting with things, right mouse buttons for rotating the camera. So we're gonna say, if that right, right mouse button came down on this frame, then we're gonna cache that information in our mouse position on rotate startup here. So that's gonna be like how we're storing. We're gonna say, okay, the X position is this. And from here on out, if the mouse moves to the left or the right, we're gonna rotate in that direction. So we'll say if input dot get mouse button down, and we're gonna pass in this, the, first, the number one index, which is zero is the left mouse button, one is the right mouse button. If we push the button down this frame, then we're going to say mouse position on rotate start equals mp.x. Else if input dot get mouse button one, meaning if, so if this happens, we know it's the very first frame that we've pressed it. However, if we get to this point, we know it's not that very first frame, it's some ensuing frame, but we're still holding down the right button and we still want to be rotating. Then in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if mp.x is less than mouse position on rotate start. If it's less than, it's to the left, then we're going to do on rotate input 
question mark dot invoke and pass in negative one. Else I'll actually do else if mp.x is greater than mouse position on a rotate start, just to ensure that like if we click it, click the button and then hold on for a second and don't know which way we want to go, we're not just going to start rotating in a direction that we the that we the developer chose. So we'll make sure that we've moved in one direction or the other. But in this case, we'll call on rotate input question mark dot invoke positive one. And so this will rotate us in the other direction. So that gives us our rotation controls. And then lastly for zoom, in this case, we're going to use the mouse wheel to zoom. You could also technically do something like this and use the X and or the Y um, position. But for now, I'm just going to use the mouse um, scroll wheel. So I'm going to say if input dot mouse scroll delta dot y is greater than zero and it's it's we do have a dot x and a dot y because there are the kind of multi-directional um, trackballs and things like that so and to specify the dot y value if it's greater than zero then we are going to on zoom input question mark dot invoke and I'm going to put in negative 3f here. And the reason for this is that the mouse scroll wheel tends to be a little bit more fine-grained of control. And so it finds it's helpful to actually um, increase the value. In this case, I'm tripling it compared to the keyboard input manager so that as you do move the wheel, you zoom at a reasonable speed and you're not like kind of dragging through. But you could certainly make this a, um, for example, a public variable in your mouse input manager to adjust the level of sensitivity that you want for it. Else if input dot mouse scroll delta dot y is less than zero, then we'll do on zoom input dot invoke positive three. And in that case, we're actually going to be um, zooming out. Okay. With that in place, we're almost done. However, we do need to make sure that we are telling our camera manager to listen for the mouse input manager's events as well as the keyboard input manager's events. So we're gonna go back over here to the camera manager and in our on enable method, we are going to put in here mouse input manager dot on move input. and we'll update frame move. These are all gonna be the exact same. In fact, what I could probably do is just copy all of these, I believe. Yes, Visual Studio will let you change multiple lines at once with the, if you highlight things with the Alt key held down. So there we go. So this gives us all of those. Now what I did just realize is that I did not actually implement the on disable uh, actions for all of these in the previous video. So I'm going to do that now and I'll probably put a note into that previous video about this as well. But if you're watching both of these, you're getting double the information about on disabling. And all we're gonna do in here is we're simply gonna say minus equals to each of these so that we unsubscribe when this camera um, controller is either disabled or if it is destroyed at the end of a scene. Okay, so with that in place, we should be all set here. We can go back over to Unity. And the only other thing we need to do is in our input manager here, we can add that new mouse input manager component. Now what's nice about this too, is that we can actually, like I could say remove this keyboard input manager, and it's not actually going to hurt this here because this is, remember, a static this is a, um, these are events on a static, they're on the class as a whole, so the camera manager will assign itself to these, it'll just never get an event from them, so it never actually cares. So we're doing a little bit of extra overhead of just subscribing to these, but in the long run, it's not actually impacting. We have a very modular system here, we can put in whichever components we want, we just have to make sure that we're setting these up initially.
and then those are all set. So I can go back to here, hit save, and now if I hit play, what I can do is I can move my camera using the mouse. You'll see if I get a little bit outside of the border here, then it no longer moves, but then as I move it back toward the screen, it moves. At that point, I've hit the edge, so I can't go any further that way, but here, same thing. I can go outside the border a little bit, but then it'll stop and then keep going. All four uh, movements there. I can zoom out with my mouse wheel and in with my mouse wheel. I am not touching the keyboard at all at this point. And as well, I, if I press down on the right key button, uh, right mouse button, and I move, I can get that rotation as well. So that covers mouse controls and how we can get those working here. In our next video, we're going to cover how this all works with a perspective camera instead of an orthographic camera. It's largely the same. It's really that zoom functionality that's going to change. So we're going to create a new zoom strategy for that. And then you'll have your complete array of options for these camera controls. In the meantime, uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Consider becoming a supporter on Patreon if you want to support more videos like these. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.